Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to create this awesome liquid transition inside of After Effects. And keep watching till the end of the video to hear how you could win a three month subscription to motionarray.com. Now, if you've been watching our tutorials for the last couple months, you'll notice that we've started using these sorts of slushy liquid transitions to seamlessly move from one piece of footage to another. And even though we actually have this exact transition available on our marketplace, I wanted to show you how to create a similar effect to this, but one that's really easy and quick to pull off. I'm not kidding when I say that if you follow along with me, you'll be able to pull this off in just a couple minutes. So let's dive right into After Effects and take a look. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects, and this is the final result that we're gonna be working to get towards. It's a nice liquidy slushy transition and it ends with complete white if you wanted to just end with a specific color you can do that too but the reason that I put white in here at the very end is so that we can key in effectively where our new footage is going to be coming in at the end of the transition so let's create this effect together I'm gonna to be going over to the project panel here and let's create a new composition by going down here to the create new composition box here and click it and all my settings look good here. The only one thing that I'll say here is that my frames per second is not 24. It's actually 15 frames per second, just because I like the way that gives like this stop motion, liquidy claymation kind of feel towards it. It's totally a matter of personal preference. And if you don't like the look of it, you can totally change it after the fact. So let's name this liquid transition and okay. So the very first thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a shape layer. And so the way to do that is go up here to your rectangle tool Click it. And if you don't have a rectangle here, and so you have something like an ellipse tool or the polygon tool instead, all you have to do is click and hold this and then move over to the rectangle tool. Great. I'm gonna be changing this color to be uh, a deeper sort of faded red. Nice, I like that. So now that we have that in place, let's just click and drag so that it completely covers our frame here. It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to completely cover the frame. And let go, and there you go. Step one completely done. I like to be nice and organized, so let's click on our layer here and hit enter and rename this layer to be red layer. Just because we're gonna be having a few other layers down the road and I wanna make sure that we never get confused. So now that we have our red layer in place, how do we create that liquidy sort of motion feel to it? It's actually incredibly simple. Let's just move this over here so that you can see the edge and we're gonna be adding the turbulent displace effect. So go over here to your effects and presets. And if you don't have your effects and presets here, you could find it by going up to window, effects and presets. Now let's search for turbulent displace. Click and drag it either onto your layer or onto the actual solid itself. And as soon as you do, you'll notice that it has like this wavy look to it, which is great. But not only that, you'll notice that if we move it around, the, the waving actually sort of animates itself so that all we have to really do is just change the position and this all happens naturally. It's really nice. So now we're just gonna be animating it so that it goes from off screen to completely covering the frame. Now, just a quick point here, this will only work if you're using a shape layer. If you try to use a solid layer and then try to move it over and use that, it won't actually work. It won't actually impact the edge of the frame the same way. It needs to be a shape layer. So now that that's out of the way, let's move this completely off screen and let's go to position by hitting the P key. Click on the stopwatch here to activate the first keyframe and let's move over a couple of frames, let's say like eight or nine frames. Then let's move this over until we completely cover the frame. And this is what we have so far. Nothing crazy, but it's looking okay off the bat. Now we need another couple layers to stack on and add more colors to, and this is again, really simple to do. All you have to do is duplicate this layer with Control or Command D, and then change the color by clicking the swatch icon here. I'm gonna change mine to be sort of like a faded blue color, a little bit deeper, a little bit more faded, perfect. Because it's a perfect copy, we're actually covering over the red layer completely. The simple solution to that is just move this blue layer over about two frames. And actually, let's rename this to be blue layer. Now what we have is uh, we're starting to get this effect. Let's do it one more time here. Control or Command D, move it over two frames. Change this to the color that you'd like. I'm gonna make mine sort of a deep purple. Nice. And I'm gonna rename this to be Purple Layer. And with that, this is our effect so far. It's not perfect, but it's actually pretty great for only a minute or two of work. 
but we're gonna be adding a lot to this to make it really pop and stand out. The very first thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be differentiating each of these different wavy looking effects because right now they're pretty much identical. So in order to change that, let's go down here to our red layer and let's start to change the look by changing the parameters of the turbulent splice effect. The very first thing that I'll say is that if you wanted these waves to be a lot more gradual, you're gonna change the size here. By increasing that, you'll notice that these waves are a lot more gradual. And if you decrease them, you'll notice that immediately there's a lot more numerous smaller waves happening in between. And by changing the amount, you're gonna change how crazy and intense these become. So you can see here that we sort of almost get this like splattery effect if we increase it too much, which is kind of interesting. And depending on what you're going for, this might be the look that you're trying to achieve. I'm personally not, so I'm gonna move mine back down to about 50 and increase the size to about 285. You can also work with a type of displacement and change it from turbulent to bulge, twist. I actually really like that twist look. That's pretty good actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's move on to the blue layer and do exactly the same thing. Maybe try switching it up to something like Turbulent Smooth, increase the size a little bit, maybe uh, try Twist Smooth. Yeah, not too bad. I actually like that. And do the same for purple. Let's try Bulge. Let's try increasing the amount, but then also increasing the size. And we can offset this too so that we get some of the more crazy parts of it. Ooh, that looks like an interesting piece right there. Ooh, that's a little too intense, so I'm actually I'm actually going to pull the amount down. Nice. Ooh, I really like that effect. So we're actually pretty much almost done already. What I'm gonna be doing though is I'm gonna be adding one more layer on top of this that perfectly matches the purple layer and it's just gonna be completely white. So duplicate this with controller command D. Make sure this top layer is highlighted. Let's make it white layer and let's actually make it completely white and just pull it over by one to two frames. And basically anywhere you see white is where your new footage is actually gonna start to be displayed. So now we've got a pretty great looking effect here and if you like the way this looks, you can totally just bring this into Premiere and start working with it as a transition. But what I wanna do is I wanna create a little bit more separation between these colors and just add a little bit more of a personal style to it. You might like the way this looks, but I wanna add something a little bit different. So I'm gonna be adding a drop shadow to separate each of these layers a little bit and give it sort of that more claymation type look. So let's go to our blue layer here. I'm gonna show you what that separation looks between these two colors here. So now with this blue layer highlighted, let's go up to layer layer styles and choose drop shadow. Doesn't look amazing right off the bat, but if you go down here to blue layer, layer styles and click down drop shadow, we're gonna be increasing the size here. And as soon as we do that, you can see that it really starts to separate these two without taking away that nice animated feel. It looks really great. And once you got sort of an amount of drop shadow that looks good to you, that looks about right to me. I'm gonna click on this actual drop shadow layer here underneath layer styles, and I'm gonna copy it with Control or Command C, and then on the purple and the red layers, I'm gonna hit Control or Command V, and that'll paste it onto each of these. And you can see immediately that before and after, ooh, I really like how much that pops. So you can see that this is now what our effect looks like. I like it a lot more. It's got that nice kind of fluid motion to it. It looks a little bit more like separated layers of cardboard or like it's got some actual 3D depth to it. And I really like the way this little sloosh comes at the very end. And you might have noticed that we didn't specifically animate for that. We sort of just set up these parameters and then searched and kind of found a result that we liked. But now that we've created an effect that we really like, we're gonna bring it into Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you how to use this as a transition between two pieces of footage. Okay, so now we're inside of Premiere Pro and these are the two pieces of footage that I want my transition to blend together. So I'm gonna actually find my After Effects project file here that I created for this transition and I'm gonna drag and drop the entire project file from After Effects into Premiere Pro. And select your specific composition, hit OK. And here we have our finished product, looks nice. So, I'm gonna find the very beginning, and then I'm gonna go to where it's completely finished and set an out marker, and I'm gonna click and drag it over top of the transition point between these two clips. Now let's see what this looks like. 
Okay, so this actually feels like it flows really nicely with the footage that we're working with. But how do we actually get this white portion here to show the new piece of footage while this other one is also still being displayed? First thing you're going to do is you're going to take this transition layer here and you're going to move it up one layer. And then you're going to take your second layer here, raise it up so that each piece of footage is on its own separate layer. And then as long as this transition lasts for, you want to make sure that both pieces of footage are extended so that they're actually underneath that entire transition point. So that from here to here, all three layers actually have something going on here. Awesome. So now we're going to be going to our effects panel and we're going to be searching for the track mat key effect. Click and drag it onto your second piece of footage that you're going to be revealing second. Go to effect controls and you're going to change the composite using from matte alpha to matte luma. And then select here under matte the actual video layer that your transition is on. And for us, that's video layer three. So click video three. And you can see right off the bat, what we get is, it's close, but it's not quite. You can definitely see the effect is doing what we want it to do, but we're losing all of the color here. So how do we actually retain that? Well, we're so close, we just need to add one or two more steps. Let's duplicate this transition layer here by holding Alt and clicking so that it's directly above itself. And then on this top layer here, we're gonna be adding another effect. We're gonna be adding the ultra key effect. Click and drag that onto this top transition layer and set the key color to be white. This looks great. Now you might be wondering why wouldn't you use the luma key effect instead? And the only reason that I wouldn't use the luma key, you can if you want, but you'll notice that it has less parameters to actually be able to finesse the final result. All you have is threshold and cutoff. And if you get a little bit of this white fringing on the edge, it's a lot harder to clean up with. So let's go over here to matte cleanup and let's add a little bit of choke until all of the white is gone and then add a little bit of softening. And I really like that final result here. So you might notice that we're almost done here. There's just one final problem and that's that uh, as soon as we finish the transition, our effect goes blank. And the reason that's happening is because our footage layer here is still trying to pull a mat from track layer three, but there's nothing there anymore. So let's just zoom in and let's make a cut here where the transition actually ends. And on this new piece of footage here that's trying to draw a track mat, we're just gonna delete that effect. And so now we're left with our final result. I really like the way this effect comes out, specifically because at one point in time you have both pieces of footage visible at the same time, and it makes the transition feel a lot more like an actual movement from one clip to the other, rather than just a gimmick of covering up the screen and changing things out when you're not looking. But guys, that's just been a quick look at how to get this liquid transition effect in After Effects and then use it inside of Premiere Pro. Like I mentioned before, the actual transition that we use in all of our videos here at Motion Ray is available on our marketplace and I'll make sure to link it in the description below. But now if you actually wanted to create a similar feeling look for yourself, you have the tools to be able to do so. And if you guys stayed till the end of this tutorial, then congratulations, you're eligible to win a three month subscription to Motion Array for free. All you have to do is be subscribed to our channel, like the video, and then leave a comment along with the hashtag Motion Array giveaway. And we'll be choosing somebody at random to win three months free right here at motionarray.com. But guys, as always, that's it for me. I really hope you found the tutorial helpful and I can't wait to see you in the next video.